You're one of Australia's greatest composers, musicians, and also one of our best blokes. So, George, tell us a bit about yourself. How did you, um, how did you become this composer? How did you get into music? How did I start? I have an older brother. He's three years older than me. When uh, he was 10 and I was seven, he would go off to music lessons. And um, I was always very fascinated by that. Where's he going, Mum? Where's he going, Dad? And I kicked and screamed until I got to music lessons. And then my parents said, OK, that's enough music lessons now. Um, uh, you, now you need to go and you know, do some, some real study. And so I went to high school, I finished high school, went to university, didn't want to do anything uh, non-musical at university. So I left that. I was playing in rock bands. Uh, and then I went to audition for the Sydney Conservatorium of Music and that opened up <clears throat> an enormous world for me, mainly the orchestral and choral world. You were involved in the opening and the closing of the Sydney Olympic Games in 2000 as well as the Paralympics. Yep. That is something that um, people can only dream about. And I'm just thinking, I'm visualising and I'm remembering that, uh, that moment. Tell us about that. How, um, how amazing was that experience? It was so amazing that I'm actually lost for words trying, <laughs> trying to think about it. Um, I do remember this. By eight o'clock that night when the Olympics started, it was the most perfect balmy night. And I was supposed to be backstage, which I was for a majority of the night until I was to go on stage. But being a little rebellious, I snuck out and I wanted to soak in the atmosphere it was 120,000 people. The, the stadium has got less seats now, but it used to be 120,000. 120,000 people, cameras all over the place. I thought, I don't want to be stuck in a dressing room when all of this, that's going out there. So I went out there. And I, I mean, I didn't go too far so that I couldn't be seen, but I stood on the balcony of the grandstand and I could see everything that was happening before I was about to go on. And I just remember saying to myself, Remember this moment forever. This is a moment to treasure. Uh, tears are coming. <laughs> I noticed the work that you do with children as well, and I've also noticed the one that was called Conductor and the Clown. The Conductor and the Clown is probably my favourite thing to do on stage in that, um, you know, you don't often associate, associate orchestral music with, with um, laughing, with laughter. But um, with this Conduct and a Clown program, uh, here are these, this music being played by, say, Mozart or um, Tchaikovsky, and the children are roaring, you know, laughter. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing. I love doing it. And I love performing for children. Um, and the thing I love about performing for children is when they're here and they're five years old, it's the first time they're hearing a symphony orchestra. When you hear it live, not when you're 13 or 20 or 45, but when you're three years old, seven years old, any age there that you have not heard other music, you hear these sounds as if they're all these colours washing over you. Tell us, tell us your involvement with the Greek Festival over the last two, three years and what um, members of the public will be able to see if they come along in April. Well, the Greek Festival of Sydney have been fantastic. Um, the people there that run it are amazing. So we're doing Theodorakis again. The Mitisbasis is coming out again, which is beautiful. And he will sing all of, uh, you know, a lot of his great um, popular songs as well. So the first half will be high, like last year, will be highly classical. The second half will be highly popular. But Theodorakis, tell us about meeting him. Uh, they took me up uh, to the room and he was sitting down. Uh, gave me a hug when I saw him. I, my breath stopped when I first saw him. Um, we started talking, it was kind of pleasant and beautiful and talking to me about the things I'd done. I spoke to him about the things uh, that, I, that I loved about his work. After about half an hour, I said to him, thank you very much, maestro, uh, in Greek, uh, but I don't want to overstay my welcome. He said, do you, do you have another appointment? <laughs> uh, this was about 6.30 at night. I said, no, I don't have another appointment. He said, are you in a hurry? And I said, no, I'm not in a hurry. He said, why are you going? Sit down. <laughs> so three hours later, he said, next year you don't come to a I said, yes. Uh, he said, um, come, I'll give you a blessing. And there's this wonderful photo of, of me bowing down and he's blessing me uh, in preparation for this year's <laughs> Greek Festival of Sydney concert. That's awesome. George, absolute pleasure. It's so good to see you again. Bill, it's always lovely to see you. Thanks for having me on.